So here is a very interesting question. It says, uh, given the probability density function of a random variable x1 and given that there is an other random variable x2, which I can represent as a function of x1, which means here x1 and x2 are related using this function g. Right. So what am I given? I'm given the PDF of x1 and I'm given x2 which is an another random variable. This is an another random variable. X1 is one random variable. X2 is an another random variable, which is related to X1. And I can compute this random variable X2 as a function of X1, right? Now the question here is, given the PDF of X1, you're given the PDF of X1, can we compute the PDF of X2? This is a very standard problem uh, that you study at university level probability courses. Right, so this this is this is a standard uh, a standard task that you encounter in if you take any university course in probability. This is a very very popular exercise problem that you find in most textbooks. Again, this is not something that 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 is very real world applicable, but it's a nice textbook example uh, which tests your understanding of uh, PDF, CDF, calculus, all of that stuff. Right. So while while this that, this may not have as many practical applications. But, but this is a very good textbook question, okay? So here, let's make a few assumptions and solve this. Again, this is going to be purely mathematical. We'll be going to use calculus that you, calculus, basic calculus and basic properties of PDFs and CDFs that we have discussed in the course videos, right? So here, I'm making a bunch of assumptions here, right? I'm making a bunch of assumptions. I'm going to assume that X1 and X2 are continuous random variables, first and foremost, so that I can use calculus much more easily. Right? I'm going to assume that since I'm given the PDF of x1, I'll call this function f1 as the function that gives me the PDF of x1. Right? This is a second assumption. And since we are given that x2 and x1 are related to this function g, I'm just calling it out. Okay, x2 is function g of x1. So given any value of this random variable, I can compute a value of this random variable also. Right? So I'm also assuming that this function g is invertible, which means given x2, given x2, can I compute x1? Yes, I can compute the inverse function. Okay, very common inverse functions. Imagine if uh, x2 is e power x1, then what is x1? x1 is log of x2, right? Because e power x and log x are inverses of each other, right? So I'm going to make these simple assumptions and work out the rest of the mathematics. It's a very good textbook question, by the way. Uh, it has a couple of practical implications, but not so much. Again, this is th these are types of problems that I remember solving during my master's degree days uh, in university level probability courses. I don't remember solving similar problems in uh, in day to day uh, day to day machine learning, data science, etc. Okay, so let let let's see. Okay, so what the big the big idea here is instead of operating in the space of PDFs, we should try and operate in the space of CDFs. Now let's see let's see. Okay. So, okay, so what is the CDF of x1? What is the meaning of CDF? See, x1 is a random variable. What is the meaning of CDF of x1? CDF of x1 basically says, I want to compute the probability that x1 is less than or equal to some value. Right? This is the this is the CDF of x1 at A, right? The CDF of x1 will change from location to location. Now, what does this mean? What does, again, this is something that we have, exp that we have explained in the course videos also, also in the comment section. If I have a continuous random variable here, this I'm assuming this to be a continuous random variable. If I have a continuous random variable, look at this. Imagine that this is my x1. This is my PDF, my f1. Okay, this is the PDF. The y-axis here represents the PDF of x1, right? Now, if I want to compute what is the probability that x1 is less than or equal to a, what is it? It is equal to the area under this. It is equal to the area under this, right? How do you compute the area under a curve? Right? This is something that you may have learned in your 11th and 12th class mathematics also. And this is something that I've explained in the comment section of our course videos where we explain PDF and CDF in the context of continuous random variables. Right? So what is it? So how do you compute the area under the curve? The area under the curve can be computed. Again, this is your 11th class, 12th class mathematics. It is nothing but the integral from minus infinity, integral from minus infinity to A. What is this function? Because I want to compute the area under this function. Right? So what is the area under this function? F1x dx, right? So this is the CDF of x1. Now, remember, if I have the CDF of x1, look at this, I have the PDF of x1, 
if given the pdf of x1 i can compute the cdf of x1 similarly given the pdf of x1 i can compute the p uh, given the cdf i can compute the pdf by taking a derivative right here i'm taking the integration i'll have to take differentiation so the relationship between pdf and cdf is basically the relationship i can i can arrive at cdf from pdf by taking integration i can i can i can obtain pdf from cdf by taking differentiation in the case of continuous random variables some of the examples that we have provided in the course videos are for discrete random variables because it's easier to understand diagrammatically right but this is the mathematical relationship now given that i have cdf of x1 right because look at this i have pdf of x1 from pdf of x1 i can compute cdf cdf of x1 okay so let me write the logic here from pdf sorry from pdf of x1 i can arrive at sorry i can arrive at cdf of x1 by using integration right by using i'm just putting this integration symbol here now from cdf of x1 if i can arrive cdf of x2 if i can i don't know if i can if i can if i can derive this from cdf of x2 i can always derive pdf of x2 again by differentiation d by dx right because the, because look at this from cdf i can derive pdf by using differentiation from pdf to cdf i can use integration right so now the big question here is can i derive the cdf of x2 given the cdf of x1 and given that x1 and x2 are related using this and similarly the inverse function that's the core idea so what is the probability that x2 is less than equal to b okay i'm not using say i didn't want to use the same variable a here and to confuse you right i'm just using a different variable name here so what is the probability that x2 is less than equal to b how do i write this what is x2 x2 is nothing but g of x1 right see what is x2 x2 is nothing but g of x1 so it is probability of g of x1 less than equal to b very simple now look at this this whole this whole inequality this whole inequality i can write see i already have the cdf of x1 i already have the cdf of this right so if i take g inverse on both sides if i do g inverse on this g inverse on this side g inverse of g is x1 itself so i'll get x1 here i'll have g inverse of b so what is the probability that x1 is less than equal to this number remember b is a value here b is a value like 10 right if i have 10 i can compute the g inverse function of 10 right so this is also a number remember that this is just a number which is represented in this symbolic fashion okay so now 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 now, now here comes the fun can we compute the probability that x1 is less than equal to something what is the probability that x1 is less than equal to something it is nothing but this integration right see this a just went to the limit here in the integration that's it right so what what is happening here what is this this is nothing but integration again i'm just applying this formula here it is integration from minus infinity to this value because this a was put here in the integration side right same g inverse b i'll place it here this is f1x dx right so what do we have now now i have obtained the cdf of x2 look at this from pdf of x1 i got cdf of x1 using simple integration from cdf of x1 i can get cdf of x2 because i already know f1x remember i already know f1x i already know the g inverse function see what all do i know i know this f1 i know g inverse also so this should be straightforward to compute right so look at this so this is the, again I'm, I'm, just, I'm just rewriting this whole expression here clearly so probability that x2 is less than equal to b what is this this is nothing but the cdf of x2 at b right this this is this how this is how i can read it right this is nothing but this integration now we know that pdf of x2 pdf of x2 is nothing but the derivative of cdf i have already written this right pdf of x2 is nothing but the derivative of cdf right it is a rate of change of it so now if i take differentiation on both sides look at this if i take derivative on this side what happens see this is the cdf of x2 at b if i take the derivative of this what do i get i get the pdf so what is this this is the pdf sorry this is the pdf of x2 at b right that's why see the pdf of x2 i'm writing it as f2 right the pdf of x1 i wrote it as f1 right the pdf of x2 i'm writing as f2 this is nothing but the derivative of everything that's here now what what is here what is here look at this what is this this is nothing but the cdf of x1 what is the, how do we read this in english 
this whole symbolic thing how do you read it in english the d by dx which means it's a derivative of the cdf of x1 at this place right that's what it is so if i want to compute the pdf of of the random variable x2 at any point b i just have to take the cdf of x1 at g inverse b and take the derivative there now what does this mean graphically again this is something that i have discussed in the course videos what does derivative mean so again this is something that i have discussed in the uh, when we talk about optimization when we talk about basics of calculus like differentiation integration in the course videos mostly what is differentiation differentiation is rate of change of something right so look at this okay let me explain this okay imagine this is my random variable x1 okay this is my random variable x1 i can plot the cdf of x1 because i already have the pdf of x1 i already have the pdf of x1 i can plot the cdf of x1 by just doing a simple integration right now if i want to plot the pdf of x2 right at every point pick one point this is my x2 random variable this is the pdf of x2 this is what i want to plot so pick any point b now what will be what where do i place the point corresponding to b do i place it here do i place it here do i how do i decide where to place this when i plot this curve at every value like b a c d for each of these values i have to pick where the pdf lies now how do i compute it i see if i want to compute it at b what should the value of pdf of x to b now what does this say this says pdf of x2 at b is nothing but the derivative of cdf of x1 at g inverse b right so given b i compute g inverse b because i already know the function g so at g inverse b i look at again i'm looking at the cdf curve here because what does it say it says the derivative of the cdf of x1 at this point so this is my cdf curve that's why it's ranging from 0 to 1 right this is this is the cdf curve for this cdf curve at b this is where again at g inverse b not b sorry so given b i want to say where where i should put the point so compute g inverse b take that point here and what what is what what is a derivative derivative again this is something that i explained in the optimization point in the optimization section of the course right where i say what is derivative derivative is the slope of this tangent at this point right so given any curve you can easily compute the gradient this is called the gradient or the slope right so you you can compute the slope of this line right what is slope of this line if this line makes some theta it is the tan of the theta effectively if this line if this line makes some theta with x axis it is a tan of that theta that's what slope is right the tan theta or the slope of this line is what if, let's assume the slope of this line is this value let's say the slope of the line is 0.1 so you place 0.1 there now you do this for all the points here then you will arrive at the pdf of x2 right in a nutshell the pdf of the random variable x2 is the derivative of the cdf of x1 using the inverse function under the inverse function right so this is a very very popular textbook sorry this is a very very popular textbook probability question uh that you can find in almost any standard probability textbook right this is how you can compute it